Howard Polskin drops by to share with us the most bizarre right-wing headlines ever. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, reading my copy of the writing that comes in my inbox every weekday, uh, this is, uh, you know, the, the news from right-wing websites. It's just a, a quick summary, a headline in one paragraph. Um, and uh, one, one that really caught my attention was uh, today, the headline, 200,000 votes hijacked from Trump to Biden at, in Georgia at precinct level. Um, another one, Rudy Giuliani is so powerful. Oh, my. So uh, let's talk with Howard Polskin. He is the president of The Writing. The website is, it, it's writing without the W, it's R, like right wing, the, T-H-E, writing, R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G dot com. And also the writing is uh, the Twitter handle as well. And of course, Howard Polskin, P-O-L-S-K-I-N. Howard, welcome back to the program. Uh, I understand that you've uh, put together a collection of the, the weirdest, wildest, and most outrageous headlines from right wing websites so over the last week or three. Uh, it, I did it all. Do I have that right? And if so, go ahead. November. I did it all from November because it was so crazy. Um, and it okay. kind of blew my hair back what I saw. Uh, you do okay. it every day. Like you, you read the site every day. And, you know, I put it together every day. But when you just take the craziest ones from four weeks and put it all together, it, it's, it's, it's quite a story that gets told. So tell us the story. All right. So... Uh, so a few things. So I, it's astonishing to me that the drumbeat of, the, of election fraud would continue so long after the election. I thought it would happen a week or two. No, it's gone on five or six weeks now. The longevity of it and the intensity has surprised me. Um, and it's clear to me that the right-wing media is going to continue this drumbeat well into Biden's presidency. But there may, were, may I uh, jump in here? Sure. It, 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 I'm guessing, and I'm wondering if you're seeing evidence of this in your right-wing headlines and stories that you're that you're monitoring. And and boy, do I tip my hat to you. I I would not be able to do this. My gag reflex is not, you know, is, is too finely, fine-tuned. Um, but I'm thinking that there's two reasons why this is happening, and that the most important reason isn't that Donald Trump is trying to stay in power. That's not why 220 members of the House and Senate. Republican members of the House and Senate today are refusing to say that Donald Trump won and are continuing to support the idea that there was uh, voter fraud. And that is because they want to increase the restrictions on voting. They, they want it, they're trying to figure out ways. I mean, this is, this is the history of the Republican Party going back to Operation Eagle Eye with William Rehnquist in the 1960s in Arizona that spread across the South. Um, you know, where, where big, burly white lawyers would show up at polling places and yell and scream at, at uh, uh, black, Hispanic and Native American people. And then, you know, and then we got into into the into the 90s and in the 2000s, voter purging, where they would say, oh, you moved, you know, and throw thousands of people, hundreds of millions, actually. I, I think we, we, we uh, Greg Palace has documented the purging of over 10 million people over about a decade, um, people who were still voting, right, uh, or who, s who still should have been able to vote. Uh, but they would show up at the polling place and be told, I'm sorry, you, you're no longer on the list. Um, and the purging now has been outed. My book, you know, the, the Hidden History of the War on Voting, numerous articles, Greg Palast. I mean, there's a bunch of us who outed that. And so now they're looking for a new strategy. I'm betting their new strategy is going to be comparing signatures on the outside of envelopes with voter registration cards and holding them to a stricter standard than they have. Because over time, people's signatures drift. And, and change slightly. And this would be a new way to disenfranchise people from big cities and things. Um, what do you think of that? And is that theory supported by what you're finding? I haven't read that specifically, um, but from reading all these um, conservative headlines, I think it's clear that it's good to be paranoid about what's going on on the right. Um, there's a well, lot this is what things. Trump said about Georgia. He, he tweeted just last week, if Brian Kemp would simply compare signatures, he'd find a lot more votes to throw out. I think that's, I think that's quite plausible, and that could be one of the main reasons behind this. But I'm seeing this mm -hmm. at so many different sites, and there's so many different reasons why they're putting it out there. Um, part of it is, I think, it's just an extension of Trumpism. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I would think that most sites would waive the white flag and say Trump won, 
Let's move on. Some have, uh, like the Washington Examiner and National Review, but many are still holding on to this concept that the that that Biden is not the president elect, and that's really mm. scary, and and it really yeah. undermines a. a, a a, a pillar of democracy and open and free. Well, throughout the throughout the the the, the Obama presidency, they were saying Donald. They were saying that uh, Barack Obama was an illegitimate president. That he was born in Kenya. I mean, it wasn't that was that what sales pitch as widely spread as this one is? No, not as this. This is I mean, these this line of thought is coming from at least a dozen websites, which have millions of unique visitors a month. So it's very disturbing. Hmm. It's kind of like the Super Bowl is held. There's a team that wins, but then in the next six weeks, that team hires Rudy Giuliani to go around the country and, and, and nitpick each decision by a referee that will undermine the credibility of that result. That's what it's like. You also have, yeah. I mean, for instance, here's one thing that really chilled, chilled me, Tom. On November 4th, um, hours after the election, there was a site that had the headline, Trump won the election. That was it. Well, what was the site? It was the Daily Stormer. That is a neo-Nazi website. So when the neo-Nazis are behind you, uh, you know you've got trouble whether you know it or not. Uh, but there, there, were, there were about three or four other headlines that really chilled me in the last month. Go for it. Okay. So... So also um, that, that first week, it was an uh, American thinker had a headline, uh, Ballot Gate is the Single Greatest Crime in Modern American History. Like, wow, like that is, that, that is so crazy. Um, the Stream, which is a, uh, a site launched um, to help Christians think more clearly about political and economic issues, they had a story that said, how about an election do-over? So they have... They, they were actually calling for an, another election to be held. And I was like, wow, the, the, country can't, the country can't handle that. And then, of course, there were the, there were the articles that just praised Sidney Powell, including one that called her our Joan of Arc. So, right. She's you know, the Trump lawyer who, of, who claims that you know, widespread election fraud or voter fraud. Rather. Exactly. And, and, and actually, she was too extreme even for the Trump camp. And she was dismissed. Yeah. Yeah, they disowned but, her. But still you have stories that continue to this day to, to promote that. Um, so there, there were a lot of election fraud stories. There are stories that slam, uh, that slam Biden. There are stories that I saw that came out that, um, that thought that, wow, the, the vaccine was postponed until um, after the election. So Red State had that story come out. I would say most mm -hmm. the worst stories came out in the third week after the election. I, I would say there were more election fraud stories than 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 before. Right now, as, as here we are in the middle of December. I'm starting to see that the stories are, are a little bit fading out. And most of the stories now are starting more from the right to attack Biden, his choices, his policies. I think that's what we're going to see more of in the coming weeks.